Anyway, I am I am Rob McCollum. I am a voiceover actor. You probably know that because you're here. Um, if you've just wandered in, that's fine. You're welcome to stay. You don't have to even be a fan of anime. That's totally fine. Um, you should be though. It's cool. Check it out. There's like people downstairs that are really into it. Um, but uh, but yeah, I've been doing this for now over 15 years, which makes me one of the old men of the anime group. Um, me and Chris Sabat and Michael McFarlane, some of the voices that you know, we started doing this a long time ago when a company called Funimation moved to Dallas. And nobody in Dallas knew that there was dub work to be done or that that was a thing that people cared about. And back then, nobody really did. Um, but Funimation had a project called Dragon Ball uh, and later Dragon Ball Z, and they decided they were going to come to Dallas to record it because Dallas was cheap, and L.A. was really expensive, and Dallas was a right-to-work state, which meant they didn't have to pay union residuals, and that was before there were contracts for animation, and there's separate contracts for dubbing because it's technically non-original work because you're doing something somebody else did. So they were like, no, we'll just pay everybody $10. It'll be great. We're going to Dallas. Uh, and then it just became, hey, do you know anybody that does voices that can come do that? And it, there was like 12 of us that were in every show and like, okay, you you direct this one and you're going to write this one and you be in this one and then you're gonna be, you'll be the lead in this one and then you're going to be like person number four in the same show that you're also the lead in. Just do a different voice. Make it lower. Um, so yeah, it was a little slapdash, as the British say. In the beginning, but then it has now become a, a monstrous machine. Um, pardon my sinuses. Uh, it's raining in Dallas, and it's raining here at the same time. Uh, I am Texas local. Proud of that. Uh, there's L.A. contingency here. There's a Dallas contingency here. There's a pretty large Houston contingency of voiceover actors, and that's kind of it. Those are the only places in the country that do most post-production on, uh, on anime. Um, so the big question everybody asks is, how do I get into voice acting? Well, you can be a voice actor anywhere. If you want to do anime, you need to move to one of those three cities, <laughs> which is, I would not recommend doing because it's not a particularly lucrative <laughs> career choice. Um, but what I figured I would do, because I just, I'll answer questions what anybody wants to talk about. Um, I will give a quick bio on me just to answer the basic questions, and then we'll just talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. That's not good? You can just, because there's 700 of us here, but there's probably time for, oh, 15 of us to talk as if it were just us. And the other 700 will just listen. That's how we're going to do this. Um, yeah. Born in Arkansas. Woo! Nobody. Nobody. That's fine. Go Hogs. Um, Moo was a business and marketing guy. Got a sales management and communications degree in college. Uh, go to college, stay in school. Uh, did not take any theater to the, my much regret uh, later, but was going to be a serious business guy. Moved to Dallas because Dallas was a business city where grown-ups went and did business. Um, had no sharper job focus than that. Like, I'm going to go get a job. Hi, come on in. There's room way in the back. Just squeeze in past the 700 other people and make room. Um, and uh, started, uh, had always been a fan of improv and started doing improv comedy in Dallas. Uh, about the same time as a guy named Mike McFarland started doing improv. Uh, you may have heard of him. Uh, the, and met some actors through doing improv. I'm like, oh, there are actors in Dallas like, that claim to be professional actors in Dallas. I didn't know that was a thing. Turns out there were thousands of them because there's so many commercials and corporate videos and radio spots and cheesy HR training. Welcome to JCPenney. This is your first day. Today we're going to talk about folding. Um, all those videos get made in Dallas because there's so many corporate headquarters. So there are tons of, because there's work, there are actors. There's probably over a thousand represented actors with an agent and a headshot in Dallas saying that's what they do for a living. 
Um, that blew my mind because in my mind, like actors was something that you went to LA or New York to do and you went on Broadway or you went into movies. The idea that you could make a living in just a city, which you can do it in Miami. There's well over a thousand actors in Miami doing local commercials and radio commercials and corporate training videos and Spanish telenovelas. There's a lot of work to be done here. But it's not glamorous stuff. It's not like get into the movies, Hollywood stuff, but it's pay your bills as an actor. And if you go to New York and LA, you have to be an actor slash waiter slash realtor slash, you know, homeless person. Um, so I was like, wow, okay, I didn't know that was possible and kind of started doing it on the side for a few years and then decided that it was uh, what I wanted to do for a living. Booked my first national commercial. I'm like, I want to get an agent. Okay, you got an agent. Now go to, I'm going to go to an audition. Went, booked the first commercial I went to. It was like $3,000 for a day's work. I'm like, this is awesome. I'm going to do this forever. I didn't book anything else for three years. But it was Southwest Airlines. Some of my best work. Do you want to see it? First national spot. Airport. Can you see it in your mind? You ready? Luggage. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. First national spot. Uh, yeah, so I'm like, oh, acting's easy. This is going to be great. Didn't book anything else for three years. Um, started doing a lot more improv and then started doing voiceover for commercials for uh you know car dealerships and the like and then also mike and some other people that were out at funimation were like hey we're doing this anime thing um are you an anime fan i'm like yeah totally i love it let's do that um so kind of got it in, in, in backed into this world and then was just amazed at how deep and how far it went. And it's been 15 years now. Uh, over, I think something like 250 to 300 titles. Um, some of them one off like Soldier Number 4. Uh, uh, some of them are leads. But it's been awesome and it's been fascinating. And then when the convention world started happening, because this, you know, it's been around for a while, but it, it didn't get really serious till about eight years ago that the that con started popping up and now you can go to a convention any weekend there's five somewhere in the country anytime you want to go and there are some people that do that for a living like they're they because you don't make much money doing anime voiceover um, but you can make a living going to conventions and and signing autographs and talking to the fans and getting people excited and people have found out amazing things to do panels that they do and that's their job uh, and it's kind of like the residuals you don't get for anime you get by being a con artist. <laughs> Not a con artist, but you know what I mean. Thank you for the drum roll. I appreciate the rim shot. Um, but I, you know, I still do mostly work in commercial. I, I do a lot of television, I do a lot on camera. Uh, I was the host of Good Morning Texas for two years. A terrible, terrible morning show. If you're watching WFAA Dallas, I, it's a terrible morning show. And it was terrible when I was on it. It was not, <laughs> it was not better because I was there. It was still terrible. Uh, but it was getting up at 5 in the morning, which is not something that actors like to do. So I decided, you know, let's go back to doing anonymous voiceover stuff. Um, and uh, also I'm a writer and producer. I produce a lot of corporate, those corporate training videos that I talked about. Uh, I'm a comedy writer. I hire a lot of Dallas actors to do comedies for companies to try to make them funny. I've used Ian Sinclair a ton. Ian Sinclair is really funny. If you've been to his panel yet, if you don't, he's talking. I know he's signing autographs later today, but he's got several panels. He's really funny, and we've used him a lot. If anybody wants to find embarrassing uh, Ian Sinclair footage, look up Alcatel Lucent, The New Guy. The New Guy. Uh, there's a series of corporate videos that are online uh, that feature him. There's also one that I can't find, but I'm going to look for it. That's Ian Sinclair in a panda suit dancing badly. Uh, that was an actual corporate video that someone paid for. So if you can find it, bring it to me. Uh, other than that, yeah, I, I know a lot about Doctor Who. I know a lot about corporate training videos and sitcoms. Um, I'm happy to talk about internal policy of IT security for a really long time, if that's something anyone wants to talk about. <laughs> uh, 
um, and uh, and a, a lot of voices. This is the morning voice. It's a little congested, but there are different characters that happen at different times of day. So Kogami from Psychopaths, if anyone's a Psychopaths fan, is a morning character. Kogami's down here. He never gets any louder than this. He gets really close to the microphone, and he's just calm. Uh, Kazuno Stigma, basically same character, but 15 years younger, uh, is like a midday. You can do him around noon. And then the younger characters are like, hey, up here. Oh, yeah, that's definitely a post 2 p.m. That's an afternoon voice. Um, Baki the Grappler. Anyone ever heard of Baki the Grappler? Um, yeah, he was like 14, so that was an afternoon. Weird that you get pigeonholed into certain things. When I first started, I was only young guys and heroes. Like young 14-year-old, we're going to win, like Josh Greel type. That was my, that was my voice. And then uh, uh, finally, like two years in, uh, Justin Cook said, I want you to be a bad guy. Try to be a bad guy. So I got to be Sensui from Yu Yu Hakusho, season three, uh, who was a very down here bad guy. And then from that point on, everyone's like, no, no, you're a deep voice bad guy. And then I never could go back to doing <laughs> the heroes. I'm like, I still can do that. Now I can't. Now I'm old. Now that voice is gone. Now it's all down here. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's the bio. Uh, I have a list of all the shows I've ever done because I don't remember a lot of them. So if we need to look anything up, we can. Sometimes people come and ask me to sign things. And I'm like, I remember that show, but I have no idea what my character's name was. So now I have a cheat sheet, which is good. Um, so what do you guys want to talk about? Who's got questions? Ask a question. All right, thanks for coming out. Appreciate it. It's going to be a good day. No, we're good. So, so any particular, I'll ask questions first. Any particular shows that I have been in, not my, my role necessarily, but what are shows that you guys like? What's people fan of these days? I know that Free Eternal Summer, big deal. Season two, what's that? Tokyo Ghoul, also a good show. Um, yeah, Free Eternal Summer season two, but not season one, which is weird. Yeah, eventually, it's possible. We don't know yet, but I'm like, why? what? What? <laughs> what? Fairy tale. Jalal. Mistigan. Mistigan. Jalal. Mistigan. Um, and Seagrain. Uh, yeah, so, okay. Fairy tale. Anyone else fans of fairy tale? Seen the fairy tale? Know the fairy tale? Yeah. So, Chris Bevins directed that. And... Uh, told me like don't watch it ahead don't watch the japanese wait we're going to do it i want you to i want you to discover it as you as you get to it with fairy tale and uh these two guys are cousins seagrain and jalal they're different people they're cousins uh and so i want you to do similar voices but they need to be significantly different i'm like okay so we worked on that and worked on that and worked on that and finally kind of found the voice for two of them. Um, anybody who doesn't want spoilers? It's, it's like season one. It's not a huge deal. All right, we're moving on. Close your ears if you don't want to hear spoilers. So when I find out it's the same person, one is a projection of the other, I'm like, dude, you lied to me. And he's like, no, I was letting you discover it as an actor. <laughs> so yeah, didn't know. And then he said, okay, and then there's this guy, Mystigan, but while you're here, we'll have you do him too. But just put him really low. Totally different guy. I'm like, it's the same dude. But then, yeah, and Jalal was like an awesome bad guy. And I love playing bad guys. They're way more fun and usually way easier. Because like the young, the young hero has to be like, oh, striving, I will win. And the, the powerful bad guys are just like, <laughs> they have them <a> like, <laughs> It's my, you don't have to yell. It's no, there's no power-ups if you're a bad guy. It's great. Um, but, uh, and, then, and then Jalal turned into a good guy. I'm like, oh. <laughs> That's limp. That's not, you were cool. And then you went like, oh, no, friendship is magic. We're going to be the power of friends. I'm like, no, okay, but I liked you better when you were evil. Some people like nice Jalal. Yes, sir. Kazuma from Kazuma Sigma is awesome. The cause. We, we called him the cause until now that has like bad Cosby rep. So we had to find a new nickname for him. I love that guy. I, I, I have a theory that Cosma is, is basically uh, 
Kojima from Psychopaths, but like 15 years younger. Same voice, same style, same attitude. Yeah, that was a great, and, and, and also laid back. He was, the su he was like the most chill of all the heroes, because yeah, you don't have to stress and strain. He was so cool. And the, the first time I went in, I was like uh, a little congested like this, and it was this kind of this laid back voice. I am the spirit of the wind. And they're like, great, do that every time. So I had to like fry my voice sometimes to go in, because it sounded too clean. Like I had to have the gravel to do Cosmo, so I would have to be like, uh, or, or drink whiskey, which is not good. Don't, don't do that, kids. It's bad. Don't smoke. Don't drink whiskey. Live clean. Thank you. He's one of my favorite guys, mainly because he's just so chill. He's so laid back and sarcastic. And uh, I think that was Bevins, too. Chris Bevins directed that. Um, the goal there was, to like, let's make him as sarcastic as possible. And if you can push the translation to make it even more sarcastic and make him more of, a, of an intentional ass, do that. So it was always pushing. Sometimes, some shows are like, nope, we're going to do verbatim translation. It is going to be as close to the Japanese as we can. We're not going to play with it all. Some shows, some properties are like, no, just make it. Just tell the story. Uh, and if you have a better way to say that, um, bring it. So I come in as a writer. And Chris Bevins as a director also will just throw out the lines right away. If something doesn't fit, he's like, forget that. All right, we're changing it. And he'll change a line in like two seconds because he also believes he's a better writer than anybody else. <laughs> Sometimes he's right. Sometimes. Not like I feel like he's going to sit through and watch this 20-minute video online just to hear what I'm saying about him, but you're not always the best writer in the room, Chris. I'm sorry. It's okay. These 700 people agree with me, right? Again, just loop that. Just put several, map that several times over. It's a huge room. It's huge. It's giant. Um, okay, so we have fairy tale fans. We have some cause fans. Spirit of the world. Attack on Titan, kind of a big deal. I have some, uh, I have some Attack on Titan uh, artwork that I'll be selling in my booth. I, I'm not selling autographs. Come in, get pictures and autographs all you want at the booth, those are free, but I have some stuff that I'm selling that I had commissioned by artists, if you want some of it. Um, uh, if you haven't read the manga, pay no attention to the artwork in my booth. <laughs> yeah, Attack on Titan, I knew it was a huge show, uh, and they're like, I was out of town for some of the time, they're like, no, but we got, a, we, we got a guy you wanted to play, he doesn't talk that much. He's not that big a deal, his name's Reiner. He's not, I mean, in the first, step, in the first season, He's hardly in it at all. And everybody was freaking out. Like the fan page went nuts. Like, oh my God, you're Reiner. That's amazing. I'm like, what? why do you care? <laughs> he's just, he's, I mean, he gets knocked on his butt and that's kind of funny because he tries to bow up and then she knocks him down. And other than that, he doesn't do, oh. <laughs> then you read the manga and you realize there's more to come. Uh, still no word on season two. They're in production in Japan right now. We have no idea when it's going to be here, or when we're going to get to voice it. Everybody in the show loves it and cannot wait. Um, it's the first show I've done that has an after show. You know, they have the after Doctor Who and the after Walking Dead. There's an after Attack on Titan show that's on YouTube. Uh, and I got to call into it. It was very exciting, my first after show. That's a genius idea, by the way. You don't have to pay for any content, and you get to have your own show just talking about the show that just aired. It's genius. And, and Chris, what's his name from The Nerdist? Um, Chris Hardwick. His After Walking Dead show, talking about The Walking Dead, is like rated higher than Good Morning America. Like <laughs> More people tune in to listen to him talk about the show that they just watched because he's cool. He has the life I want. If I could change places with I'm very happy. I'm very lucky with the life I lead. If I could change places with anyone in America, it would be Chris Hardwick. Um, what else? What does other people like? Gangsta, yes. Which, you know that Gangsta's gone now, right? Have you heard? She went off on the panel yesterday, like, this is why you don't pirate. Because Gangsta was a great show, and the company that produced it is out of business now. There will be no season two or anything else, because they're gone. We were all excited, because like, this show's cool. Are we going to get to keep going? Oh. No, we're not. The broadcast dubs is a new thing that Funimation is doing now where they will broadcast it, the dub the same week that it airs in Japan to try to get ahead on 
piracy and also like if you're gonna if you're gonna watch it for free, we'd rather watch you watch it on the Funimation channel and at least stay part of the family. So they started these broadcast dubs. Um, the crazy thing is that we have to normally we'll have a month to work on an episode, and you might come in for a day and spend a whole day doing all your lines for the season. So you'll do twelve episodes in one day because you're only in a few scenes. Well, you can't do that with the broadcast dub. We get them on a Saturday. We have to have it ready to go on air by the following Monday. Wow. Uh, a week. So we have a week ahead of time that we get them. They'll send them to us before they air them. So you'll go in for like five minutes because you only have one line that episode. But they have to bring you in because they've got to get that one line before the end of the week. And you have no idea. Sometimes we have no idea what the shows are about. If they're not based on a manga, we... Sometimes, like, we've seen just episode one. So the directors are like, I don't know who's a big character. Like, this guy has two lines. This may be the lead in, by the time we get to episode three. So it's a lot of times that it's, it's now turning out to be only the veterans that are getting to do it because they can't put a newbie to do this two-line role and then find out that that's the criminal mastermind that has a three-episode arc. <laughs> later for someone that's never done this before so it's like okay you you're gonna be that guy he may be big i don't know do that all right you're gonna be this guy is this good guy or bad guy no idea okay cool so it's so far i haven't heard any crazy missteps but there's about three or four of them gangsta was one of them that was broadcast dub uh uh psychopath season two they did a broadcast dub of um uh stay dandy baby um Space Dandy was broadcast dub. Uh, uh, the oh, what was the Tears of Heaven? Laughter in Heaven? Laughter in the Cloud, you mean? Laughter in the Cloud. Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, I'm a nerd. I just can't remember the name of the show. So I'm proud to be a nerd. Um, but yeah, so the broadcast dub thing is an interesting uh, dynamic that's brought in there. Um, it's. I don't know that it's led to the best quality dubs. Like, uh, we've gone back. Also, that that's like not super, that's like straight to web video quality. But then we put them out on DVD later, so we get the broadcast quality, and we're like, oh, those flaps don't match at all. There's like, there's like five more mouth movements than we could see on the, broad, on the, on the web version. <laughs> like we're going to have to redo that. <laughs> So that's happened. All right, other questions. What does anybody want to talk about? Just This is now officially your panel. Yes, ma'am. What's that? Future Diary. Is a, uh, there, there was a lot of cool ideas in Future Diary. There's a lot of shows now that are getting more psychologically interesting. It started being very generic, and now it's... it's like I felt like Psychopaths was really cool, just in terms of the idea and the content. If you haven't seen it yet... Go find that show. I, I don't recommend all the shows, but go find Psychopaths because that was just an interesting, bizarre concept. Uh, kind of along the lines of Minority Report, but taking it even further and into a more like technological way as opposed to a mystical way. Yeah, it's, it's cool and interesting. Uh, and dark. I like dark. <laughs> you guys like dark. I can tell. Well, you're up 11 o'clock. Yes, sir. You have a question or are you just saying, hey? Okay, anybody else got questions? <laughs> yes, sir. Do yes. Don Quixote Do Flamingo from One Piece, the show that never ends, the <laughs> longest show on the planet. Did anybody see the uh, Funimation guy that tried to do a marathon? Was going to watch all 180 in a row Water? nonstop? Yeah. Uh, it was hilarious because he's, I mean, he basically stayed awake for two and a half days straight and was just, and live streamed it. So you could watch him watching it. Because they did the marathon on the Funimation channel, and then he had a camera of him, and we were going by, like, oh, we had little time sessions to go by and interview with him and sit and watch him. Um, but by day, like, two, he would just forget that the camera was on. Just be like... <laughs> and the first day, he's interacting like, oh, I really love this part. Oh, I haven't seen this yet. I love this character. This is played by the, you know, making a show out of it. And by the, he was just, <laughs> you just watched him. They, I don't think he made it all the way because, like, for health reasons, they had to pull him out because he was losing his mind and had, like, Red Bull and 
Cheetos, and it was it was fantastic. It was great drama. It was like Castaway meets Ed uh, uh, meets Clockwork Orange. Yeah, it was it was very cool. But you know, I loved El Flamingo. Uh, there is a rumor that he is coming back, that he's going to have a new arc in some of the new episodes, because uh, you can't actually die in One Piece. Like you just keep coming. Like wasn't didn't he get his head cut? No, he's fine. Oh, okay, all right, cool. Uh, so we haven't gotten confirmation yet on any of that, but there's there's rumors, and I would be very excited to see him do another turn. Um, I get to do Do Flamingo, and I also got to do Chaka, uh, who the tearful like crying in the water. Yeah, there's there's a lot of feels. There's a lot of feels in the One Piece. It's an emotional show, and there's not a lot of subtlety. Like you know, you're going to be screaming if you're doing a One Piece. There's going to be a lot of, of loud emotion. Yes, sir. So, kind of like you, you read some of the markers of the show that you're on? Depends. Uh, I, I will sometimes ask the director, like some of them I've just read on my own before I get cast it because I don't know, you know, we don't know what's coming down the pike or what a Funimation. Basically, the way it works is that if there's a show out in Japan, everybody in the U.S. bids on it. The, th the four distributors will bid on distributing that in the U.S. That determines who's going to voice it and you know, Crunchyroll, us, I mean, everybody's competing for the same thing, and we never know what's going to happen. Um, but if it is, once we get a title and I find out I've been cast, sometimes I'll ask the director. I'm like, okay, is this a read up on this one or stay, stay dandy? Like, do you want me to in the vague about it or you not to know spoilers about my characters and then if and they'll, they'll they'll tell me like no it's fine you can read it or you can watch it go here's the japanese you know sometimes we'll watch ahead of time although a lot of times i i like to not because i like to be surprised also because when you just you know uh, people may not be familiar with the process but a lot of times you're by yourself or you're always by yourself but sometimes nobody else is recorded yet on the english you may be the first or second actor to record so you we watch the japanese scene by scene and then we will re-record it in the English but you're by yourself in the headphones so you're not getting to hear anybody else's stuff and you only see the scenes you're in because there's usually not time to sit down and watch the whole episode the director has done that and it's the director's job to quickly because you're always under a time crunch to say hey here's what this scene's about here's why you're upset you know your dad was killed by this guy and now you're defending the family honor and you're a samurai but you've gone rogue and uh, you know whatever uh but you don't really know the whole concept of the show, and so you kind of piece it together in your mind what you think it's about based on the four or five scenes that you've seen. And I usually don't watch the rest of it so I can wait till it's all recorded and then go back in and listen and realize like, oh, I was totally wrong. That's not what that show's about at all. And I thought I was a really important character. I don't, I don't matter at all. This is all about this person. This is Jamie Markey's show. Um, but I, I like that discovery. So sometimes I try not to go, at least beforehand, after I've recorded, sometimes I'll go back and do it. And uh, Attack on Titan is one that I, you know, kind of, after we were done, dove, dove deep and, and watched the Japanese and then read the manga. And, yes? I have seen the Psychopaths movie. I just hope they stay with him because for season two they ignored him and they went with her which I get because he's gone off the reservation in the movie you get to find out where he's been a little bit um, yeah I, I feel like in the movie they set up that there were still bigger conspiracies to be unearthed um, like you you thought he was uncovering some deals and then you're like oh no that's not the deal this is the deal these people are involved and the president is involved in some way and so I feel like he has he's gonna go back I think he's gonna go back and I think he's gonna find 
that's just total guess. I have no idea. But I think the story, if, if, if it were up to me, he would go back in but be underground in the city and use all of his tech nerd friends to, to beat the system. Like the way Makashima did. I, I think he's going to try to become the Makashima for good. Meaning, I'm not going to go be evil, but I'm still going to beat the system and use the system against itself. I think that's where I would head. But again, I have no... They're not asking me, but I would love it. I just was upset that he was barely in season two. I'm like, oh, I'm just a flashback. <laughs> but I like this guy. <laughs> and there are some shows that you just do. You go in for a day and you record and you're like, okay, that was cool. Psychopaths is one of the ones that like... And causing no stigma too. That you get like, I got emotionally attached to these characters. I dig this show a lot. It's cool. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Sweden. This is the first show that my daughter was at all interested in. I have two daughters. Um, one of whom is very into anime. She's never been into anything that I've done. She's never cared in the least. Um, until Hitalia. And then she got into Hitalia and suddenly it was a big deal. Um, <laughs> and it's also where she learned about shipping. I'm like, yes, well, that's, that's the other side of what daddy does. <laughs> She's 14 now. It's fine. <coughs> she can handle it. Um, we went to Sweden this summer, and I was like, oh, this, this is going to be great. Sweden in Sweden? No? <laughs> Nobody cares? Nobody in Sweden actually cares about Italia? Okay, it's fine. <laughs> but it was kind of great. I, uh, I had auditioned to be a couple of other roles and, and thought I was going to get and then didn't get to be, um, partially because of some scheduling and partially because there's a lot of talented people in that show. But uh, yeah, and Sweden hardly ever talks. He's in it a lot, but rarely speaks. Um, so again, one of those things where a lot of people come up and ask me to sign and talk about it, and I'm like, I think I recorded all of Sweden in like three days. <laughs> the whole series, all episodes. But it's great to be a part. It's one of those things, you, know, you love things that have a life of their own outside, you know, and Italia is. And the other great thing is like, I know more about early European politics than I ever, like, because it actually, all is correct. Like, it's all based on real history. You can pass history tests based just on what you know from Italia. <laughs> like, you're going to get a C, but you'll pass. It's cool. Speaking of history, musical theater. I know we're going a, a different area, but anybody musical theater fans in the room? Anybody? Check into it. Alexander Hamilton. Alexander Hamilton is amazing. It's a new musical. It's on Broadway right now. It is a hip-hop rap story of the founding fathers it sounds ridiculous it's amazing it's the guy who wrote into the heights uh, in the heights and uh it's ridiculous good so that's my one plug for the day go see go listen to alexander hamilton don't go see it it's like 700 dollars a ticket uh but get the music it's really good um yes so italia sweden I, I hope so. We don't know yet. Again, we're, there's a, there, and there's a bunch of things. Like, I tried to check in with some of my Funimation insiders. Like, can you confirm or deny this? Can you confirm or deny this? Do we know anything about this? No. So I can't. I don't know. I'm hoping so. I feel like there's no way that they won't because we've done all the others. But y with, when it comes to dealings and money, you never know who's going to bid something out uh, and take something away. Like the same way with Free Eternal Summer. Like, well, you let us do season two, you're going to let us do season one, right? Like, that's going to happen, probably. Um, but it, there's no logic to it. It's just, it's just dealings. Um, but I would love to. And I, I, I don't even know if, if Sweden is in the Thursday. Do you know? Okay, good. That would be exciting. He's just so quiet. I like him. Yes. Any other questions? You. Yes, sir. Oh, Big Boss of Oshu is great. You were saying about the movie or just the show in, in general? Yeah, I love it. That's one of the most fun characters. Again, totally over the top, ridiculous. For those of you that have not seen Sengoku Basra, it's a, a samurai battling, you know, warlords battling that just goes on forever. You just always are fighting somebody, and, when, and then you have honor and respect. Like, I love you. You're my brother. I'm going to beat the crap out of you next time we meet. And that goes on for like four seasons um but 
my character Date Masamune is a, is a huge dude with an ego problem, and he dry. Is, this is you know pre-revolutionary, pre-industrial revolution, Japan, swords, not guns, and yet he's riding a horse with a muffler and handlebars, like like it's a, like it's a low rider. It's awesome. It's like it's a Harley. Uh, the horse can also jump like a thousand miles. They jump off cliffs. And I, I, I think it's a great dub. I think that we have some really good voice actors on it, but you should really go listen to the Japanese too because they have some of the best English. My character thinks he's the cool guy, so he says a lot of things in English. And his English is fantastic. It's amazing. And I wanted to to copy some of it directly. I'm like, can I just say that? Instead of the, cause like, are you ready guys is one of his, are you ready guys? But in the Japanese, he's like, all right, we go there. <laughs> okay, yeah. You like to party? That's another thing he says all the time. Let's party. So it's great. Listen, I can't even, my voice is so fried. But yeah, go back and listen to his original English. It's fantastic. It's amazing. And I, I think it's a cool show all the way around. Um, there's a director named Jeremy Inman, who's also a voiceover actor. He's come to some cons. I don't know if he's been here or not. But he's, uh, he's awesome, and he plays the sidekick in the, in the first few episodes that I was like, Big Boss! Big Boss! And so now every time he sees me, like I'll go into Funimation, and he'll be across the parking lot, and I'll just hear, Big Boss! It's great. Uh, one of my uh, many one-eyed characters, I don't know how that's become my niche, but Curio and Romeo X Juliet, Toppy and Sands of Destruction, the, the Kuma, uh, the Bear, lots of patched characters, lots of one-eyed characters, squinty characters, um, also characters that have something in their mouth all the time, like Mifune and, uh, and Tasai from Samurai 7. Uh, like you find yourself in niches like, oh, that's a one-eyed character, we'll call Robin. That's what he's gonna do. Samurai 7 was one of the early ones that, that blew up. Like none of us knew how big that was gonna get and went huge and was on broadcast and was on Adult Swim. That was a cool show. Samurai 7, if y'all haven't checked it out, it's old now. That's, that's like 10 years, I think, going on. But it's a really cool show. Yeah, they were running on IFC and gorgeous. Like the animation on that. That was one of the first ones that I'm like, okay, they, we're, we're now, we're now into the art world. This is visual art and that also has voices under it. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Sekirei. Sekirei? Yes. Did you like that show? Is that a, are you a fan? Okay. That's, I, there's so many. That's, and, and Sekirei was not a, a huge amount of time commitment on my part. So, you know, you're, And I'm always fascinated because someone will come up with a show that I've forgotten. Like Sekirei, you're not going to forget because that was kind of a big deal. But there are some little bizarre ones that someone comes up and is like, oh, do you remember that? Like someone brought up Origin, which was a movie. Yeah. It's really cool and weird, but yeah. And then Strain, someone brought up Strain yesterday. Ralph Warrick, which was like a kind of Victorian era character named Ralph, which I always thought was funny. So you don't forget that. Um, what other questions do you guys have? It doesn't have to be about anime. Relationship advice, <laughs> dating, uh, how to talk to girls, how to talk to guys, whatever you want. Uh, bring it. Yes, sir. Killing floor. I'm trying to remember. Now, I think that was done all in Texas, but I think it had L.A. actors that they brought in. Sometimes they will go send, if there's several L.A. actors, sometimes they'll send a director out to L.A. to record in the studio out there. Other times they'll bring actors in. They try to, Tara that does our scheduling, her life is a nightmare, but she has to figure out like, okay, I need him for two hours on this show. And then next month I'm gonna need him for an hour on this show. And then I think there's something coming up in June that if we can get ahead of it on, we can fly that actor in for one day and get all of that. They can fly in in the morning and fly back in the afternoon. It's crazy having to figure out all the math of it. But, um, but yeah, Killing Floor, I, I think, was a, a pretty good mix of L.A. and Dallas. I don't even remember who else was in that. I'll have to look it up. 
Other questions, anime questions, life questions, yes. Mifune was great. First of all, super low key, again. He's not a big yeller, he's just cool, he's chill. Um, and that was another one where I got really into that show. I thought Soul Eater was a great show. Um, and, uh, and I was hoping he'd come back more. I'm like, come on. You, you put Black Black on his ass and now you're gone? Come on, let's go back, let's see you again. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. That's what I was hoping, because there's a whole lot more of Mifune, and I'm like, let's get some of that into the show. Let's see that, and, and we, we never did. But, uh, but yeah, he's, he's very cool and has a very interesting and kind of a full, rich backstory. Lots going on with him. Other questions? We can also just be done. We can just go get coffee. That's cool. Well, I mean, I, I would say there were a bunch that were even. Uh, Psychopaths Now is probably my top favorite right now in terms of just the character and the show. Um, also, the, the guy that plays the, the uh, head villain in the show is a guy named Alex Oregon. He's in Dallas and is a, a theater actor. He's Yale School of Drama trained theater actor. Member of the Dallas Theater Center resident acting company and like a big a big deal in the theater world uh, and had not done anime before. And so they brought him in and I'm like, oh, I think he's gonna be really good. But you never know, because it's kind of a weird skill set, like separate from just being a good actor, like doing the technical side is different. And then he was amazing. So like cold and clinical and really good. And so that, that's probably a, a top show. Yu Yu Hakusho, since we, the first bad guy I got to play, will always have a, Warm spot in my heart. How are we doing on time, by the way? What time is it? 11.47. So we're fine. Are we done at 11.45? We're we done at 12. Okay, we got plenty of time. Um, so uh, Sensui, uh, Baki the Grappler was a ridiculous show. I was Baki. It was the first lead, the title character I ever got to play. It's just ridiculous. He just fights everybody for honor. He fights them and like rips people's ears off and then is like, I respect you now because we fought, so let's be friends. And then he's friends with everybody. The Yasha ape, like he loves everybody that he beats up and tries to beat him up, except his dad. A lot of daddy issues. Um, but so that was a fun one, but even though it was ridiculous, I really liked Sands of Destruction, Kuma. I played a bear, looked like a teddy bear, had one eye, Kuma. He said he was a Kuma, Kuma, and he would say the name Kuma after every sentence, Kuma because that's how they show respect, Kuma. So you just, and, and eventually like it began to make sense. Like it wasn't even weird after like an hour in the booth, Kuma. You just, even if the writer forgot to put it in, Kuma, you would just add Kuma. Uh, so that was one of my favorite. Um, and he has this incredible battle scene where he's battling another Kuma, like the black evil and fighting and boom, and comes down and boom, Kuma. It was awesome, it was awesome. Shockwave goes out. Um, what are some other favorite roles? Uh, what was the one that we just did? I don't even think it's been released yet. Uh, there's a new one about a guy that goes to, is a calligrapher that gets sent to a village island. Barakamon? Barakamon, yeah, thank you. Is that out yet? I don't think so. Yeah, it's coming. It's, it's, uh, and it's me. Holy I'm the crazy callig calligrapher guy, and I love that show. It's gorgeous. Video. If I'm not supposed to have announced that that has been released, somebody look it up. See if that's been released yet, or see if I'm about to get sued. Um, but that's a really cool show. Uh, simple, like pastoral village life, and you would think it would be really boring, but it's just charming. And the little kid is charming. It's about a little girl that he kind of takes under his wing, but he's this egomaniac artist from the city that has gets kind of sent to the village to calm down because he's too full of himself and he's having a breakdown. And uh, it's just hanging out with kids, chasing fireflies and bugs and fishing. And you would think it would be really boring, but for some reason it's super charming. Um, yes? Yeah, I mean, that was really fun, and there's, they recorded a lot, 
And so I don't know if it's in there somewhere, like yet to be, like I know there's a whole bunch more banter between characters and also lines that live in Borderlands 2, but I don't know where you unlock them all. Like, and, then, and I've, I've, I've seen some of the cracked things online where people have cracked the audio and you can play like all of Axton's lines back to back. And I'm like, okay, I know it's in there somewhere then because I've heard it, but I have no idea where in the game it is. I know a lot of them are like when you leave the player alone, um, like you, when you walk away from your controller for a long period of time, they recorded like a half hour of me just berating you for being bored. Um, and they let, they let it go a lot. And there's a lot of, Borderlands 2 is one that company in general likes to let actors play and you bring in your own ideas and bring in your own lines and you, you might, they'll have a, a series of lines and then you're like, okay, and then give me five more, whatever you can think of on the top of your head. And so you get to actually kind of put an imprint on the character, which is really fun. Sometimes that's not allowed at all, but in that game they really like, you're like, no, do, do what you want. Figure out what you think Axel would say. Yes, sir. Ooh, what was the hardest? What was the biggest pain uh, to do? Probably one of the, the well, I will say I loved it, but, uh, but uh, Date Masamune from Sengoku Basra, that's a fighting show, and there's a lot of screaming. There's a lot of yelling and powering up, and you have to be careful because if you have other sessions that day, like, you can fry your voice pretty bad. And sometimes we'd go, the way we would actually record that is we'd say, okay, let's do all the dialogue first. And then we'll go back and do the yells at the end because then if you fry your voice, you're not, we still get something out of this session. But you have to be careful. Also, I do a lot of commercial voiceover. So I used to be the voice of Fiat. Like uh, any of the Fiat commercials when they drove under the water and came up in New York. Like, the next wave of Italians has come to America. Um, and so you couldn't, I couldn't go do a, uh, a Sengoku Basra session on a day that I had a commercial session. I had to do them in the evenings because it would fry the voice. Um, some others, I, uh, annoying characters. Uh, Nasalhoff was fun. He was really annoying though. Um, ooh, you asked about favorite characters. Uh, Witchblade. Tozawa from Witchblade is another favorite character that I thought was a really fun, funny guy to play, and I really liked that, that show. Witchblade is a messed up show. There's so many issues. <laughs> like, just male being afraid of women. Like, there's a lot of, like, generational psychological baggage within that show, <laughs> but it's a really fun show. Um, yes, sir. I, 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 I like their relationship. I don't think, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's an, it's, it, it's like a brother sister thing. Like, I don't think it's a ship. I don't think that's ever going to work out. Like, I don't even think either of them want it to. I mean, I, I'd, I'd rather, I'd rather get with the lesbian, uh, that Lydia Mackey plays, um, the controller. What's her name? Uh, Shion. Yeah. Not Shion's hot. I'm sorry. I don't care. Gay or straight, whatever, Xi'an is the business. Uh, and I, I feel like that's really more up in Kogami's. But I also, don't you feel like Kogami has like a crazy life? Like yeah. he goes clubbing into really dark, dingy places that people don't know about. Like he, he keeps on the straight and narrow with Akane, but you feel like he's got things on the side that nobody needs to know about. <laughs> yes. What's that? Summer Wars, yeah. Summer Wars was huge. That's the first one that my mom ever watched. My first, the first anime that my mom ever watched was, was Summer Wars that I was in. She was so excited because it was like playing at the movie theater. And she was so, oh, it's so good. Are you, which one are you? I'm like, I, I drive the ambulance later. I'm, I'm barely in it. It's fine. But she's like, no, but it's in the movie theater. That's a big deal. I'm, yeah, I'm, I got like four lines, but she's like, well, you're on the poster though. I'm like, no, that's not me. <laughs> Well, you look like you. And like, no, they, they do look alike. But no, that's a different guy. <laughs> but yeah, and I thought Summer Wars was a cool movie. Like the concept of it and the kind of the, the, everybody coming together with their, with their avatars. And I thought it was just an interesting concept. So I'm glad it did as well. And that's another one where sometimes we rush through 
a huge amount of care was taken on that dub. And, and the fact that it got played, that the dub got played in theaters and got the resu- response it did. It was considered for Academy Award and uh, for anime. It was one of the top, the five in, uh, consideration, in consideration for that. And it was the dub that was submitted. Wow. It wasn't the original. And I was like, wow, okay. Again, that was Mike McFarlane. That was Mike McFarlane's like, pet project and bane of his existence for months and months and months. And I thought he did an amazing job with it. Yes, sir. How do I feel about the ending of Cousin of Stigma? How do I feel about the ending of Stigma? Um, I thought it kind of petered out. I'm like, oh, you could be stronger than that. I mean, it was like, okay, I get what's happening, but you could have been a lot stronger, I thought. I mean, I, but I, I, I like that show. I think that show got tamer and tamer as it went on, which I was surprised by. Like, it started a little more hardcore. Um, but that's another one of those relationships. Like, okay, it became about the two of them, not about the enemies you were fighting. Um, so many fart jokes, too. When you're the spirit of the wind... I call upon the spirit of the winds. Like, it, the fart jokes write themselves with that show. Yes, sir. What do you think about Death Parade? Death Parade. Death Parade is really cool. And uh, same guy that uh, I was just talking about, Alex Organ. Uh, that was another main, main role of his. I thought he did really well with it. Uh, I think Leah Clark is hilarious. I think that's an interesting concept, too. Again, that's one of those just, like, weird ideas that almost seems like a short story. Somebody wrote, and then like it got expanded into this whole show. But I thought that was a really interesting show, and that was a fun character because he's just a jerk. <laughs> he's just kind of an ass. Um, and uh, but but yeah, that's one, and that's I don't, that hasn't been out very long. That hasn't been released for long, but I feel like that's one that people are starting to talk more and more about. Like that's starting to get attention. Hey guys, come on in. There's like 700 people here, but you can. There's room in the in the side. Uh, to come through. We're just, we're lying for the camera. There's not, okay, here's the thing. People at home, there's not 700 people here. There's like 250 max. (laughs) I'm just being silly. It's like 200. Totally kidding. So yeah, we're just answering any questions anybody's got. How much time do we got? Like five minutes? One minute? One question. Last question. Hey, I'm Rob. You guys just got here. You're here for the next thing. That's totally cool. But hey, I'm Rob. If you have any questions, ask them now. All right. Thank you guys. So, oh, yeah. Wait, no, here we go. Here we go. We had it. You weren't a fan? You weren't a fan of the ending of Soul Eater? I, I didn't hate it. I mean, I kind of knew it was going that way. I wasn't overly surprised. But, yeah, I know, I know why people are upset. I get, I get it. But I didn't mind it that much. Thank you guys very much for coming out.